Hey, what's going on? Today I wanted to chat about some small changes here in the studio and have a jam to show the changes in action. I finally upgraded my studio computer and no, it's not a Mac studio. The computer I actually ended up with is an M1 MacBook Air 16 gig. The storage is only 256 gigs, which might be an issue later, but it's rare that I have that much stuff on my computer, especially when it's just audio recordings and uh, this computer is meant for studio use only. Plus, I'll probably end up with an external hard drive at some point if I really need the storage, since you know storage is pretty cheap nowadays. So why did I go with an M1 uh, MacBook Air instead of the Mac Studio? The main reason is portability. I switched to a Mac Mini at some point in 2019, I think. And while it was pretty great, I eventually realized I missed the portability of being able to be in the studio and make music here and then take my laptop somewhere else, like my couch, a backyard, someone else's studio, and mix the track over there completely undistracted from my sense and wanting to constantly add more. On top of that, the Mac Studio is way overkill for my needs. I'm doing the least when it comes to making music. My tracks are just not that, uh, not that complicated. Honestly, the portability is a tiny thing, but it meant a lot to me, so I'm back at it with a laptop running the studio, which I can still connect to all my peripherals if I need to um, and make it just act as a desktop. So what's up with the rest of my studio at this point and how am I making music now? Well, let's have a quick jam and see what I come up with. So right now, for a majority of my drums, I've been using this plugin called XO. You might be familiar with this from other people's um, YouTube channels or whatever. Basically, it just takes a ton of your samples or samples that comes with it and algorithmically puts them in kits that sound good together. So I usually start here to kind of get a rough beat going that I can build around. And this is kind of the default beat and rhythm that I have going. Cheesy as you would expect. I can just kind of, right? Maybe I don't like the snare. I can select the snare. You know, I actually kind of like where it was. Okay, yeah, I like that. So, so honestly, when it comes to drums, I just start there because it helps me just get the idea going. It's usually a beat around that type of vibe that I'm gonna use anyway. So with something like XO, sure, you can go in and edit all the, um, how do I do this? I still don't really know how to use it. You can go in and edit the pattern sequences and stuff like that, which is really nice. But I just kind of leave it here for now just to kind of get the idea going. Now on to sampling. I usually either grab something off of YouTube, Splice, Tracklib, or I make my own with some synths. But for the sake of this video, to keep things quick, I'm gonna just go ahead and use Splice. So same thing, just type in Splice. Boom, this pops up. Let's go ahead and find something. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and give away my secret. It's not really a secret. None of this is a secret, but I'll just search in uh, something like chords, right? Duh, I love chords, but what I really like to do is I like to go into tags and try to find tags that have nothing to do with house music. One of my favorites lately, of course, is lo-fi, but sometimes they can be a little too on the nose for my liking. And key, I'm gonna go ahead and choose G minor. Let's see what we can come up with. That's honestly really, really dope. Yeah, I think we just nailed it with that one. What the, what do you mean? Oh man, now that I logged in, that thing is now gone and I can't find it. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna have to try and search that again. So uh, like I said, I'll go to tag, we'll go to lo-fi, we'll choose the key of G minor, and let's find something new. You know what, I like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this um, here, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drag it into live. Oops, let me get this out of the way. So I usually, I know I can just play it from here. I'm just gonna be playing it directly into the Octatrack, but in case I want to do any kind of editing here. Ba-ding, 
that'd be dope. See, I can go ahead and edit this in here, but I like to make things fun, and I'll just kind of go ahead and sample this into the Octa track. So I'm going to solo this. Um, track one on Octa track is just set to um, quick record mode. So as soon as I hold this down, it's going to hold it down and record whatever's coming off of my computer. I want to grab all of that. Cool, that's done. I'll unmute this and we'll flip back into here. So if I go to AED, it's there, but we don't hear it because I have this solo, my bad. Awesome. Open this up. We'll change our start position to right at the beginning. And I'm gonna to go to edit. We'll normalize the selection just to bring it up to level. Something simple, I do this all the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to use this like this, um, but I might end up cutting off that little bit of air at the beginning, so. Oh, right, that's already in here. So now I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this and go to chromatic mode. Oops, I forgot to trim the beginning, my bad. So once I get this here, I also need to crop my sample and make sure the end is as far as possible. Awesome. So edit, go up to the top, crop to selection. Yes, that's okay. Awesome, now we'll go back here. That works. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this uh, two bars. We'll say, um, we'll put a pitch here. And then here, I'm just gonna go down two. Cause that's all I was doing semitones. I'm not even gonna bother playing this in cause it's just easier to do this. All right. Now I'm gonna get this kind of in level and mix with my track to make sure it sits properly. Basically, I got my kicks kind of already set to minus six, and I know my sample, I want it to be either between minus six and minus 12. That's kind of the sweet spot I'm going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of reverb. Turn the high pass up. And we got a filter on here as well. Turn the cue up. I'm gonna set our cue to just the low pass, not the high pass, set our low pass to 24, turn the cue up a little bit. And now I can either design an LFO to do something cool with this, which is what I'm going to do, or I can use the envelope to kind of do something similar. Right, so it just kind of pops up. That's kind of cool. some movement across that trigger, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to LFO. Our parameter is gonna be going to our filter width. And from here, we can just turn this up. And I'm gonna set this to trigger multiplier by 16. This is really extreme. But then you just kind of bring it back. And this is playing off of that envelope that we have as well. Because if we go here and turn our envelope down, we do something really cool like a triangle or sawtooth. And then turn this back up as well. I mean, that's kind of it for the sample, right? That, that works decently, sometimes it comes easy. So next, we could do something uh, with Peak here. Yes, I work in Novation. No, this isn't sponsored. I just happen to use this synth a lot. Um, I have Peak here set up as an external instrument plugin, and uh, it's hooked up to push. I know we are in G minor, which is helpful, so I'm gonna just set push to G minor. We just go back and forth between those two notes, really. Turn some reverb up. And I, I got rid of the Nord. I wanted to see how much I miss it. I miss it a lot. It's just chilling in the back room where I didn't sell it. But um, 
what I end up doing a lot on peak is I'll just go to the wavetable and use the E piano. Right? Yeah, something, something as simple as that. Like, I'm telling you, when I said I'm doing the least with my music, I am doing the least. I'm just kind of trying to capture, capture a groove, kind of capture a vibe. So hopefully this kind of works, let's see. And I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it unquantized for now. I'll probably end up changing that later, but right now it's working. Let's kind of shape this up a little bit more. I'm gonna go to our effects, set our delay into reverb into chorus, turn the reverb down a little bit. Same thing for the mix of this, I want it to be way quieter. You can already see it's kind of sitting here at negative 12, but because it's such a high pitch versus this, this kind of blends into the mix a bit more. High pitch, which I, where I want it to be up in the higher registers, it's a little too high for me. Uh, volume wise, I'm gonna bring this down. One of my favorite things is just to go really far down, close my eyes, or I'm gonna just stare at you like a creeper and slowly bring it up until I think it sounds good. Way back there. What what is this? I'm gonna guess and say only because I know myself minus minus 36. We are at minus 16, but the actual volume of it is at minus 30. So you get the idea. Stuff like this, I just want it to be way way back there. So now let's add some bass. I know I'm in G minor because that's the sample I chose and the scale I set, so that helps a ton. And lately, I've been having fun with. Uh, the base station too. Again, I work at Novation. No, this isn't a sponsored video. I just been experimenting with this thing. It's super fun, super straightforward. Um, so I've been having some fun. So uh, yeah, let's add some bass. So this is a patch I have on the base station. I made it uh, a couple days ago. Been using it on everything. Sounds kind of intense, but I just get a little bit of. Right, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just go ahead and press play, kind of jam. I usually like to try to find like three to four notes that really work. So I know these work, right? If I turn up the filter to hear it a little better. So I know those work, so I just, I can just play the octaves. Okay, cool. So that works. I know I can just hit capture to capture that because I just played it MIDI wise, but I'm gonna just play this in, so. Awesome, there it is. Let's head back to the computer. So honestly from here, it's literally just about tweaking things and changing up the sample, maybe to create some variations. And also another important thing is getting the MIDI information out of XO to create unique patterns. And that's actually a pretty sweet thing about XO. Again, this isn't sponsored, I just love this plugin. So what I end up doing, two things with XO. I'll go, and this is our beat here, right, which is great. So what I can do is go here and export the beat as MIDI, literally drag it over. And if I go back here, that Super duper simple beat, which I could have just made in a second, is here, but you'll notice that there's some really good swing on things, some things happen a little early. So I like a lot of that humanistic feel, but I think the most important thing that I do with XO to really get a better mix down is under the master outputs of any of these eight outputs, you can go to auto route all outputs and I'm gonna send slot one through eight to bus one through eight. So if I do this now, all that we're left with, if I press play, is just the effects. So what happens to our audio? 
check this. I'm going to go ahead and say audio. Where is it coming from? XO. And what's the bus? Bus one. So this can be renamed to our kick. And if I turn this to, uh, get this out of here. We turn this to auto. Our kick is back. So I can do this again and again and again and again and again. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we need uh, seven and eight. I don't think I'm using all eight sounds. I think I might just be using a couple, but basically uh, you get the idea. I can go to three, we'll go to four, get all this. You don't want me to see me doing this. And eight, so now when I press play, boom, we got all our sounds back. I can go ahead and grab this, group them. Of course, name them appropriately. XO, audio, collapse them in and bring down their volume because they're way too loud. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and lastly, let me fix this uh, base station loop here. We'll go ahead and do this and I'll just quantize it. Why not? Awesome. Oh, never mind. Do not quantize. That messed everything up. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming by. If you want to support the channel, feel free to check out some merch here at this link. But by all means, you kicking it is more than enough. Thanks again. I appreciate you a lot. And until next time, my friend, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. All right, let's jam a little bit.